Welcome to 6.6, .6, which I would say is probably the hardest lesson of this whole chapter. There's a reason this lesson is called Advanced Integration Techniques. Now, in this lesson, we're essentially just going to start, we're going to learn the last integral te uh, techniques, and then just look at a bunch of problems and try to figure out which one do I use just by looking at the problem. And this is a harder question than we think. I remember when I took AP Calc AB, my math teacher explained it as we're kind of magicians and we have this hat of magic tricks and we pull out a magic trick and we throw it at the problem and we see if it works. And if it doesn't, then we try another magic trick. So today is kind of summarizing all the magic tricks we have for integration and trying to look at a problem and figure out which one I should do first. Now, the last thing we need to learn, there are two more integration techniques we need to learn before we start this practice. So the first one we're going to learn is where the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator. Now, just to review, degree is the biggest exponent. So if the biggest exponent in the numerator is greater than or equal to the biggest exponent in the denominator, you must do long division first. That's the only trick we have for that. So if we look at this first one, example number one, the biggest exponent in the numerator is 2. The biggest exponent in the denominator is 2. So this is going to be a long division. Anytime those biggest exponents are equal or, the, or top heavy, we have to do long division. So now we get to see if you remember long division. Now, first thing with long division, you see right here this, that is a placeholder. It's holding the place because I'm missing that middle term there. Anytime you're missing a term when you do long division, you must have a placeholder or you're going to do things wrong. Now, first step of long division is I compare the first term on the outside with the first term on the inside. And I think first term times what equals first term? So x squared times what equals x squared? Well, we know that's 1. So we're going to put a 1 up here. And you'll notice I lined it up in the numbers column. If I do that, what th uh, this one times what equals that one thing, and I get, say, an x, then I would line that answer up with the x column. But since I got a number answer, I line it up with the number column. Keep them all lined up. That's important for long division. Okay, next, you take your answer, and you're going to distribute it into everything in there. So 1 times x squared is x squared, 1 times 0x is 0x, and 1 times 2 is 2. Next, I need to subtract. Now, this means if I'm going to subtract, I'm basically going to change the signs of everything. So I'm going to change that to a negative, change that to a negative, change that to a negative. Subtract them all. So x squared minus x squared is nothing, 2 minus 2 is nothing, negative 4x minus 0x is negative 4x. And now that is my remainder. So once you have a remainder, you can rewrite the problem. By the way, I know it's a remainder because if I try to do this one times what equals this one, there's nothing that I can do this times something is that. Well, I can, but it's a fraction, and we don't want to do that. So that's how I know that I'm done. So I'm going to rewrite this problem as my answer, 1, plus a fraction. And the fraction is going to be my remainder, negative 4x. Let's color code that so we can see it a little better. Let's do it orange. my remainder, negative 4x, over what I divided by, x squared plus 2. 
So now I have this problem. It is this is the same thing as this. This is just the divided out version. So now what we're going to do is take my divided out version, and since there's an addition, I can separate it. So I have that one plus the integral of this one. And now notice this one, the degrees aren't equal anymore. Now the top is less than the bottom, and that's what we want. That's the point of this. So the integral of 1 dx, we know that one, that one's easy, is x. This one is going to be a u substitution. So I'm going to make that u. Now you might ask, how do you know it's a u substitution, Mrs. Johnson? Well, I know it's a u substitution because if I take the derivative of that bottom just in my head, I know that the derivative of this is going to be 2x, and I can make this look like a 2x. If you take the derivative of the bottom and you can make the top look like that derivative, that's a u substitution. So that's what we're going to do. Now, next, I am actually going to take this negative 4 outside. And the reason I'm going to do that is my derivative is 2x dx, that negative 4 is not a 2. It doesn't help me. Now, if that number in front of the x matched my derivative, then I'd keep it there. I want it. But because it doesn't match, I'm just going to move it out front so it doesn't confuse me. And then I'm going to rewrite this inside 1, moving that x out. Or move that x right there, which we've done multiple times. So now I can see I need to add a 2 to that to get that 2x dx, which means I need to add a 1 half in front to keep it balanced. And now I know this is u, this is du, so let's rewrite this. x plus uh, 1 half times 4 is a negative 2, so let's just change that. And then I have 1 over u, du. Well, we already learned that 1 over u du, last lesson, that's ln of absolute value. So then the last thing I need to do is plug in my u, which was u was x squared plus 2. And we're done. Okay, in the next video, we'll do example number two, which also uses long division and use substitution.